The Garmin Phoenix 8 is considered by many to be the ultimate sports watch. Now with the Pro version, the popular Phoenix series has been expanded and it comes with a brand new display technology that we've never seen before on any sports watch or smartwatch. Micro LED. But what else is new and how much Pro is really in the Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro? As always, I've put this watch through its paces and in this video I'll show you everything that's new as well as all the pros and cons of the watch so that by the end of the video you will know exactly whether this watch is the right choice for you. So let's get started, have fun! The concept of a pro version for the Phoenix watches is certainly not new. Already with the Phoenix 7 and Phoenix 6 we saw a pro model about a year after release. And even before that for example there was the Phoenix 5 Plus. Typically these pro models brought only a handful of but often decisive additional features and this year is no different. So if you were expecting a completely new watch you will likely be disappointed because in terms of the software features the Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro doesn't really offer much that's new. More on that later. The highlight of the watch and I think we don't need to beat around the bush here is the new micro LED display. Until now just like with the regular Phoenix 8 you could choose between a darker but very sunlight readable MIP display and a very bright and vivid AMOLED display. The latter is used in almost all smartwatches like the Apple Watch. For quite some time now there had been speculation about a completely new display technology and Garmin has now delivered it. Micro LED. Unlike classic AMOLED or LCD, this technology uses, just as the name suggests, microscopic LEDs. More precisely, each of the roughly 400,000 subpixels consists of a tiny LED that can be dimmed individually. This allows for perfect blacks, but most importantly, the display is simply brighter. Garmin never gave NIT specifications for their previous watches, but their AMOLED displays likely had something around 1,500 to 2,000 nits. Until now the leader among smartwatches was the Apple Watch Ultra 2 with up to 3000 nits and the new Ultra 3 remains on 3000 nits as well. The Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro now raises the bar by 50% offering up to 4500 nits with its micro LED display. An incredible number. That said it's not as if 4500 nits looks 3 times as bright as 1500. I do think you can clearly see that the new micro LED display is brighter than previous AMOLED ones but all Honestly, in my eyes the difference isn't as dramatic or significant as the numbers suggest. The big advantage is that the display is more readable from different angles compared to AMOLED. Still in everyday use it often isn't that noticeable. And yet the micro LED version comes with a hefty price tag of $2000 or 2000 euros. And to be honest I'm just speechless. Yes everything is kind of getting more expensive nowadays but $2000 that's just insane if you ask me. Especially considering that the micro LED version does not only come with a high price tag but also with some major sacrifices in battery life which is something we'll talk about in more detail shortly. Well the Phoenix 8 wasn't exactly cheap either and the target audience for this watch is probably people for whom the price of a sports watch isn't the main concern. The Phoenix 8 Pro also comes in an AMOLED version which only, big quotation marks here, costs around $1200 to $1300 dollars depending on size. And speaking of size, the Phoenix 8 was available in three different case sizes, 43, 47 and 51 millimeters. The Pro version is now only available in the larger 47 and 51 millimeter options. And the micro LED version is only offered in 51 millimeters. Another noticeable change is that the Pro versions are now significantly thicker even though the non-Pro versions were already anything but slim. The larger 51mm AMOLED Phoenix 8 Pro is now 16.5mm thick compared to 14.7mm on the regular 51mm Phoenix 8. The micro LED version is even 17.5mm thick. Even I who constantly wears some kind of watch needed time to get used to it. It's definitely a chunky beast. It's very bulky and thick. For running or sleeping this could be annoying for some people. At least the weight hasn't really changed much. It's still 90 or 93 grams for the 51mm models. Of course the watches are once again built extremely robustly and with high quality just as you would expect from the Phoenix line. The case is made of titanium and the display is protected by sapphire glass in all variants. The non-pro version still offered the less robust stainless steel and gorilla glass as options. The second major new feature of the Phoenix 8 Pro is LTE connectivity. 
This had been one of the key differences between Garmin watches and the Apple Watch or Samsung Galaxy Watch. On those, if you chose the LTE version, you could access the internet without your smartphone. With Garmin, this was previously only possible with the Forerunner 945 LTE. Many people had hoped for this feature and in the past I have also criticized the absence of the LTE functionality on Garmin watches. Now the Phoenix 8 Pro finally makes it possible with the so-called in-reach technology. In principle, this is just a separate internet plan for your watch, similar to what you would have for your smartphone. And just like that, it comes with monthly costs as well. There are four different subscription tiers starting at around $8 per month and going up to nearly $50 for the premium package. Text messages, voice messages and calls via LTE can be made unlimited in all four plans. The watch has a built-in microphone and speaker so you don't need headphones. You can also share your location via LTE or send SOS emergency signals also unlimited. These can even be triggered automatically if the watch detects an accident. It only gets more expensive if you want to use satellite connectivity on top of LTE. But in any case, you need at least some kind of subscription. Personally, I think things like emergency calls should definitely be free. On the plus side, you can use this single LTE plan in many different parts of the world, like for example the US and Europe, unlike many smartphones where in many cases you would need two different packages. The advantage of satellite connectivity is that it also works in remote areas such as in the mountains since it doesn't rely on nearby cell towers but connects directly to satellites. We've seen this recently on some smartphones but for a smartwatch this is the first, though Apple has now followed with the new Apple Watch Ultra 3 as well. For a Phoenix watch which mainly targets outdoor athletes this definitely makes sense for staying in contact in emergencies. The Phoenix 8 Pro even has a guide that helps you align the watch with the satellite. If trees, buildings or other obstacles block the connection, you will need to move to a clearer spot, but once you do, the signal usually establishes pretty quickly. You can also set whether the watch should use LTE only, satellite only or which one to prioritize. If you want to use satellite for messages, calls or location sharing, you either have to pay per use or need a more expensive in-reach package. One important thing to note is that the watch provides a data connection but no phone number. So it's not meant for regular calls or SMS. Instead, Garmin offers its own services, primarily via the Garmin Messenger app. With this app you can call or message anyone who also has the app installed on their phone. You can also call other Phoenix 8 Pro watches directly. So unlike the Apple Watch for example, the focus here isn't really on smart features but much more on safety. You can't make WhatsApp calls but you can share your location, make emergency calls and communicate via the Garmin Messenger app. A major drawback of the micro LED technology is that it's extremely power hungry. While the 51mm AMOLED Phoenix 8 Pro offers up to 27 days of battery life or 15 days with always on, Garmin claims the micro LED version only lasts up to 10 days or as little as 4 days with always on. That's significantly, significantly less than what we are used from other Phoenix watches. When using multiband GNSS during outdoor workouts, the 51mm AMOLED Phoenix 8 Pro lasts up to 53 hours while the micro LED model only manages up to 34 hours. Of course, as is typical with Garmin, there are many different battery saving modes such as Expedition mode where the AMOLED model lasts up to 24 days and the micro LED model up to 8 days. On Garmin's website you will find detailed specs for many different scenarios. You can also create custom battery modes on the watch defining exactly which sensors are enabled or disabled and instantly see how each setting impacts the overall battery life. In general, as mentioned, the battery life of the micro LED Phoenix 8 is clearly weaker. We have now covered the two big innovations of the Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro, which is micro LED as well as LTE slash satellite connectivity. This alongside the build quality and battery life is mostly hardware related. In terms of the software features however, not much has changed compared to the non-pro version. I've already published a detailed review on the Phoenix 8, so be sure to check it out as well. I won't bore you out here by rehashing all the well-known Garmin features, but let's quickly take a look at a few highlights. After the Phoenix 8 last year, Garmin released the Forerunner 970, which came with a handful of brand new features. These were later rolled out to the Phoenix 8 via software updates and of course they are included in the Pro version right from the start. 
One of these is the running tolerance widget. This essentially shows how many miles or kilometers you can safely run per week or what your body can tolerate without overtraining. This widget also includes another new metric which you see after each run which is the impact load. This indicates how much strain a run puts on your body. For example, if you run 5 miles with lots of uphills and downhills, the load on your musculoskeletal system, so your bones, joints, tendons, ligaments and so on, is much higher than it would be on flat ground. Speed also plays a role because faster running produces higher ground reaction forces than an easy run. And then in the running tolerance widget you will see this impact load, your actual distance and your tolerance. This helps you better assess whether you are currently overtraining or undertraining. Another new widget is running economy. This metric essentially shows how much energy running costs you or how efficiently your body converts energy into running performance. In other words, your running efficiency. The Phoenix 8 Pro can't measure this on its own. You need a compatible sensor that measures step speed loss, such as the HRM600 chest strap. Also included, of course, are the familiar training readiness and training status widgets. These break down the factors contributing to whether you're ready for your next intense session and they show what effects your current training has, so your load, load focus including aerobic and anaerobic strain, your VO2 max or your HRV or heart rate variability status. By the way, I recently tested my VO2 max in the lab and compared the results with those of my Garmin watches, so definitely check out my video on that as well after you've finished watching this one. Under the health menu you again have all the health related metrics such as HRV, heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, Garmin's body battery and sleep analysis. Using the health snapshot feature you can also run a short 2 minute test to get an overview of all your health stats. During workouts, as you would expect, countless stats and metrics can be tracked. Beyond the classics, the Phoenix 8 Pro can also measure running power in watts directly on the wrist, show your remaining energy reserves with live stamina data and track metrics like ground contact time and vertical oscillation. So when it comes to training features, everything an athlete's heart desires is included once again. As mentioned, I don't want to bore you by going through all the features once again. The Phoenix 8 Pro is Garmin's absolute flagship model, something you can also see in the price. So it comes with everything also found on the 4970, the Venue X1 or other Garmin watches. For more details, I would again point you to my Phoenix 8 review, so the non-pro version. Let's now take another look at the accuracy of the watch. I wasn't really expecting very exciting or spectacular results here because the Pro version uses the same optical heart rate sensor as well as the same GPS chip as the non-Pro version. However, the watches are built different, the Pro is much thicker and in my experience that does also affect the heart rate accuracy. So how well does it perform? As expected, there is nothing particularly spectacular to report here. When it comes to running, the watch is very accurate, both in the AMOLED and micro LED versions. In general, I couldn't notice any real difference between the versions during any of my workouts. Pretty much on the first day I received the watch, that was in mid-September, I took it with me to Vienna and from there I started a gravel bike tour of over 300 kilometers or 180 miles to Budapest. Here you can see the heart rate data for this roughly 20 hour tour compared to a chest strap and again there is nothing to complain about, the watch was very accurate and reliable. As is often the case though, this doesn't apply to strength training. Due to many wrist movements and strong heart rate fluctuations, sports watches are almost always inaccurate here. And unfortunately, this also includes the Phoenix 8 Pro. Regardless of whether AMOLED or micro LED, I noticed deviations from the chest strap in all of my strength training sessions. GPS accuracy, as expected, was once again outstanding. Here you can see the GPS recording of my gravel bike tour from Vienna to Budapest. No corners were cut and there is really nothing to criticize. This generally applies to all my activities. Even in dense forest, the watch remains very accurate as shown by my tests where I ran the same narrow forest trail back and forth. In my experience, hardly any other manufacturer can compete with Garmin when it comes to GPS accuracy and that once again holds true for the Phoenix 8 Pro. Speaking of GPS, you of course have full access to Garmin's topoactive maps. You can load routes onto the watch, get turn-by-turn -turn navigation, use back to start, explore new locations or generate suitable nearby routes. You can also see distances to waypoints and if you go off course, your route is dynamically recalculated. In this regard, Garmin had always been a pioneer especially with its specialized outdoor watches of the Phoenix line. Alright, so what's the bottom line with the new Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro? 
The watch came with two longer rated upgrades, which is micro LED as well as LTE slash satellite connectivity. As a classic outdoor watch, I definitely see the value in the LTE or satellite functionality, especially for mountain and backcountry use, where you want to be able to contact someone, share your location or send an SOS all without relying on your phone. The 51mm AMOLED Phoenix 8 Pro is about $200 more expensive than its non-pro counterpart. And for this target audience, so if LTE or satellite connectivity is important for you, I can understand that price increase. LTE and satellite can definitely make sense for many people. With micro LED, however, I am very skeptical. I can understand that part of the appeal was probably to be the first one to offer this new display technology. The watch is now 50% brighter than the brand new Apple Watch Ultra 3. That sounds great, but in reality, to be honest, this is more hype than substance. Yes, it's extremely bright, has vivid colors, and the display looks beautiful. But the already very expensive Phoenix 8 essentially doubles in price for the Micro LED Pro, and for me personally, that would just not be worth it, especially also considering that the battery life is significantly worse. So personally, I would go for the AMOLED version and save at least these $700. If LTE or satellite connectivity is really important for you, then the Phoenix 8 Pro may be worth considering. If not, and if you already have a Phoenix 8 or even a Phoenix 7 and Duo 3 or Tactics 8, then I don't think the upgrade is worthwhile, since in terms of health, fitness or training features, almost nothing has changed. But let me know in the comment section down below what you think about the new Garmin Phoenix 8 Pro. If you found this video helpful or interesting, you could really support me by giving this video a quick thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to not miss any future reviews, like for example my review on this watch on my right wrist. But for now, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.